is the physical model of our master plan for a moon base for the European Space Agency. ESA and NASA, they are now working on projects such as Gateway and Artemis. We obviously are going back to the moon, but once we're there, we're probably going to want to stay there and we're going to want to stay there and grow a community. What it really is, is a master plan for a lunar base set in the future. More people on the moon in a sustainable way. This is a good picture to have in mind. What we are preparing is how to make those possible uh, concrete. Even in such remote and harsh environments, it is very fruitful for, for science to discover important data about our planet Earth. So we will fly out there and we will set up a small house on the moon, initially maybe for four astronauts. And these astronaut researchers will learn a lot, perform a lot of experiments. And we will evaluate this data and I'm pretty sure we will decide, oh, we need more researchers on the surface of the moon because what they are achieving as science output is absolutely relevant for our planet Earth. We have a common history together, so we can use the moon to look back into the past of, of planet Earth and then by finding water on the moon, we can actually also answer the question, how did life start on planet Earth? And that's super fascinating. I spent six months on the International Space Station and these environments are actually not made for humans. We need to bring everything to make human life possible. It's about understanding what we don't know. Uh, and what we know very little of and what we need to do in order to know more and in order to uh, solve any problems that might arise from, from what we will discover. One very good example is the radiation. Earth is magnetically charged, which it creates, it creates a protection shield against radiation. On the moon we do not have that. So that radiation is hitting our astronauts constantly. So what we need to do, we need to protect them from, some, from that. How do we do that? Well, you need mass around you. In this design and previous designs that we've done, we're looking at creating the shell structures made out of local material, which is regolith. And the first thing you might notice is all these gray mounds that you see on the model, made out of these little tetrapods. And what they do, they are made out of lunar dust, and we creating these shell structures bit by bit part by part, they're actually thrown on top of each other until they create these kind of fully 3D shell structures. And what they are, they are there to protect our astronauts, protect them from radiation. The moon is a terrible place to be at, right? It has no atmosphere, it has one-sixth of gravity, and it's full of regolith, which is because there was no erosion on the moon, is electric, really static, electric charged, and it's very sharp. Right, so it's really abrasive on everything. So um, for us, the first thing is really trying to create spaces that are safe for these astronauts to live. So we want to make sure that our habitats don't really touch or only lightly touch the lunar surface. We can learn from the Apollo era and there we see photos when the astronauts, they came back from a spacewalk and are now on the inside of their spacecraft and we see lots of grey, dark traits in their faces and across their spacesuits as well. They brought the contamination from the outside to the inside and the moon sand is highly abrasive, so we don't want to inhale it. It's a, it's a health risk. It's also a risk for the entire technical devices and appliances that we bring to the moon. So for that reason we designed these inflatable uh, modules really that are only touching on both ends the lunar surface. Uh, they're like big bridges. It actually works like a beam, like an inflatable beam structure. So the structure is really light. It only needs the inflatable, the air of course, and some cables and a very small compression element on the top. So it's all about kind of having the minimal amount of material to create the larger amount of volume. For us it's not about astronauts being able to, to survive, but also to thrive. One of the things that we don't know, what this kind of lunar economy will look like, right? Is there going to be universities there? Is there going to be 
um, bioengineering firms there? Is there going to be manufacturing there? Will tourism be there? And how big will tourism be or how small? We don't know yet. So in our plan, what we've done, we kind of made a master plan that allows for all of these changes. In the model, we have four of these pods. These are inflatable pods. We've designed them very modular. When the base grows, we can actually change the functionality. This one here is a living space with four astronauts living. I've just added a lab to it and a little lounge. But we can change it again if we want to. So we start to look at what kind of spaces do we need to create if we have a larger community there. You know, what if we have 144 astronauts there? They'll need more than just the facilities that they have now in space. You cannot make a short-term plan if you don't have a long-term objective. Uh, and that's what we are doing with concept studies technologies. We are trying to prepare the, the ground for the objective that we have in long term, that they, they will inform the capabilities that we need at the moment. Thinking about this long-term vision, the right time to start uh, developing those capabilities is, is really now. Is it uh, running before we can, can walk? Um, I don't think so. These things take a long, long time to plan. And the way we're looking at it is not really science fiction. It's really using existing technology, existing work that's being developed, and then uh, seeing how we can incorporate that in, in an overall vision. ESA has already three flights to the moon, and we are currently six European astronauts who can be selected for these uh, three missions. Uh, I'm one of these candidates, and I'm absolutely looking forward to fulfill my third big dream to explore the surface of the moon. I would like to uh, contribute to the exploration of the moon to make sure that we also deliver the science